Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Riddhi Datta, and in today's video, we are going to do a detailed company review of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, that is OCI. So this is going to be the second video of the company review series. Just in case if you haven't checked out my first video that was on Company Atlassian, you can go and check it out on my channel. I will attach the link in description down below. Also, don't forget to check out my graph playlist series as well as don't forget to check out my low-level design playlist. You will find all the links to this in the description down below. Now let's get started with the video. So first of all, let me give you a brief uh, idea about the OCI. So OCI stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. That is basically you can consider the cloud sector of Oracle, similar to AWS of Amazon and GCP of Google. But there's a slight catch over here. Uh, like for AWS of Amazon or GCP or Google, they don't have a separate interview process, right? I mean, if you're applying for AWS teams, you would have to go to the same interview process as of Amazon, right? Similarly for GCP and Google, but for Oracle uh, and OCI is slightly different. Though OCI is a part of Oracle, but the interview process and the compensation structure of OCI and Oracle are kind of different. In this video, we are going to primarily focus on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI, interview process, as well as the salary compensation. So just as the any other video of my company review series, this video is going to divide it into five parts in the first part we are going to talk about a little bit about the OCI uh, the tech stacks uh, where are they located in India uh, the second part is going to be the levels and the compensation structure of OCI third part is going to be on how you can apply to OCI the fourth part is going to be on the interview process right and the fifth part of the video would be the benefits the work-life balance, the work culture and the perks you get at OCI. This part is going to be very, very important uh, because we are going to talk about the work-life balance and we'll see how exactly it is. So stick to me till the end of this video and now let's get started. Okay, so now let's jump to the first part of this video that is about the tech stack. Uh, I already given a brief introduction about the about OCI. As I said, it's a cloud platform, right? And OCI stands for o Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, the tech office is mostly in Bangalore in India and the tech stack is primarily Java 8. They generally don't use Spring Boot in the backend. They use something called a Drop Wizard. Also, they use technologies like React and Python. And apart from these tech stacks, they also use a lot of internal tools as well. Now, let's look at the second part of the video that is uh, level and the compensation structure at OCI. So the level one for OCI is called the IC1. That is basically uh, for a fresh grad or entry level uh, with zero years of experience. Uh, the next level is basically what you call an IC2 or a member of technical staff MTS with one to three years of experience. Uh, then you have the next level that is the IC3 or the member of technical staff 2 which you can also call an SD2 level as well for other companies and it requires an experience of 3 to 5 years and then you have the senior roles like IC4 with uh, which is also called principal member of staff PMTS and IC5 that is CMTS. So now let's look at the compensation structure. We are primarily going to focus on the IC2 and the IC3 levels and in the interview section as well we are also going to look at how an IC2 and IC3 interview looks like. So for an IC2 or an MTS level which requires around 1 to 3 years of experience the base salary comes to an average of around 27 lakhs including EPF and gratuity. You get a signing bonus of 3 lakhs for the first year and again a signing bonus of 3 lakhs for the second year and the stock bonus is mostly 40 lakhs uh, is vested over 4 years equally. So the total compensation of salary plus bonus plus stock for first year comes out to be 40 lakhs around. Now let's look at the compensation of IC3 or an MTS2 which requires an experience of 3 plus years. So uh, the base is around average of 40 to 45 including the EPF and the gratuity. You, you get a signing bonus of around 5 plus 5 lakhs over 1.5 to 2 years. You get a stock bonus of around 1500 to 1600 units for 4 years and the total compensation comes to around 60 to 70 lakhs in hand. Now I would like to point out one thing over here. Whenever you see an entry level role like IC1 in this case, the compensation is generally fixed for all, right? But whenever you go to higher levels, like let's say for IC2 and IC3 in this case, the salary that I mentioned is kind of an average, right? Uh, but again, this might go a little bit up and down depending on the offers that you have in hand and also your current CTC. Like you can't expect an exact figure. They don't have an exact number. This average is around that. I mean, I'm giving you these numbers so that you can understand whether whenever you're receiving such offers, whether they're lowballing you or not. And also you can understand the range of pay of these companies to so understand that whether applying to these companies would be suitable uh, in terms of financial aspect right now in your career. Also, I feel compensation wise, OCI is definitely up there, right? Uh, because if you see for the IC2 role, uh, that is around three plus years of experience, you're getting in hand of 60 to 70 lakhs, which is I think really, really great. And the company in terms of compensation is one of the best companies out there in India right now. Now let's look at the third part of this video. That is how you can apply to OCI. So again, there is no hard and first rule over here. You can either take referrals to apply to OCI 
or also you can you know directly apply sometimes the recruiters reach out to you as well uh, i have i have i know a lot of friends who rec recruiters have directly reached out to them so make sure that your profile is updated on linkedin right and also on other job platforms like uh, nokri insta hire and stuff what i can recruiters mostly reach out to linkedin profile so uh, take take it as a priority to you know keep your profile updated over there and again uh, you can go through their career portals page and apply uh to your suitable role like with the years of experience that i have mentioned in this video now let's look at the interview process uh, especially for ic2 and ic3 roles the interview process for ic2 and ic3 roles is kind of same there is not much difference so the level of questions might differ a little bit but your uh, basic rounds is going to be the same so there are going to be six rounds the first round would be a phone screen round where you would be asked uh, ds algo questions you can expect lead to medium questions and again you can be grilled on a lot on your projects once you clear the phone screen round you are invited to the on site interviews which consists of five rounds in the first two interview rounds you would be primarily tested on your dss skills where you would be given two lead code medium problems and you would be given on 45 minutes to one hour to solve that once you're done with those two rounds uh, the next few rounds would go like this so the third round would be a system design round where you can get asked uh, hld question as well as ld question as well the fourth round will be a bar razor round or a bar tender round right where a very senior uh, uh, member from oracle oci would be interviewing you uh, you would be grilled, getting grilled a lot on your projects you may or may not be asked a dsa question which would be of medium level uh, if you have time uh, but make sure that you read to the oci code values because a lot of behavioral questions would be uh, framed around that uh, also make sure you know your projects really really well because you would be grilled a lot on that uh, especially pick one or two project at least it can be the project where you are involved currently in your company or you know it can be any personal project but make sure to revise your projects really really well and then uh, the fifth round and the final round will be hiring manager round again it will be very similar kind of round where a lot of focus will be given on the behavioral questions so make sure uh, to prepare your questions in a star format as i already mentioned in the atlas and, and the microsoft interview process as well uh, also again you can expect lead code uh, dsa medium questions you're not going to get hard questions at all all questions will be either lead code easy or mostly lead code medium level i won't say easy but it would be all of lead code medium level uh, projects again are your are going to be very very important for this round as well as you might get killed a lot and since oci works uh, on java extensively so you can expect some questions around java and oops as well in this round so for both ic2 and ic3 levels you would be mostly expecting these six rounds and after completion of these rounds the recruiter which uh, would reach out to you with the feedback please remember that the phone screen round would be an elimination round like any other company and only if you clear the phone screen round you would be invited to the on-site interview process so now let's look at the last but not the least section of this video that is the benefits perks and the work culture work life balance that you can expect at oci so let's start with the benefits and perks so the benefits are pretty industry standards uh, free snacks free drinks uh, life insurance of two into base salary you get a phone rebuild reimbursement uh, financial retirement benefits and also other benefits as you can see on the screen also get a 15 annual leave uh, 10 sick leaves per month and 12 oci wellness day that is on every friday so now let's look at the work life balance work culture and the hike scenario in OCI. So first of all, I want to clarify this thing out that I haven't personally worked for OCI. So this is based on the extensive research that I've done online on their work culture, work life balance, what their employees had to say about OCI, uh, and also talking to a couple of my friends who are at OCI. So what I've learned is that, you know, for some of the teams, which are not the core teams like the AI ML teams or the big data teams, the work culture is not that bad. Uh, it's pretty decent. Uh, there are a lot of development work going over there as well. And you have a good learning curve as well. However, for most of the core OCI teams and specifically for the teams that are hybrid, by hybrid, I mean that uh, some of the employees are from US and some of the employees are from India, that the work culture and work life balance is pretty bad according to the employees. However, if you if you are working for OCI and you feel different, please feel free to comment down below. Also, if you are working at OCI, uh, please feel free to comment down below on this video and share your genuine experience so that it helps my viewers and it helps them to take an informed decision before joining OCI. So what I've heard from the employees are generally very discontent as uh, in, mo in most in cases of these hybrid teams where, where they are attending early morning calls and that they are extending to almost uh, like late night. Uh, the on-call rotations are pretty bad, right? And they come very frequently. Uh, there is not much support from the management and there is also a very high attrition rate because of that. Also, I learn in most scenarios in these hybrid teams, 90% of the development work is done in the US while 10% uh, development work is done in India and uh, mostly a lot of operational work is being done in India. Layoffs is not a frequent thing in OCI as I have learned because the attrition rate is anyway very high. Also the hikes and refreshers are not that great in OCI. I'm reading out one of the articles uh, uh, where an employee has 
to say the following thing about the hikes and refreshers. Uh, he said that OCI lacks a lot in employee rewards and recognition policies. In general, OCI is very different on the rest of the Oracle. Promotion and top performers still get decent hikes, though not at par with the market. They need to improve a lot on their hikes and refreshes post policies. While one of the employees uh, also added his experience by saying that work was almost completely off so me with multiple on-call rotations. On-call was 50% of the time and other 50% were fixing bugs identified while on-call. So you can understand like the work culture and the work-life balance. Uh, according to the employees is not that great and it kind of also surprised me as well because Oracle and OCI are playing a pretty high compensation uh, but now uh, my two cents over here is first of all I feel the company is as good as the team right one of my friends is in OCI and he's I think in the AIML team uh, not in the core team and he said that he uh, is having a pretty decent work-life balance and a lot uh, to learn as well so just in case if the OCI recruiter reaches out to you should you not give interview because of work-life balance no I won't suggest that personally again it's a personal decision I would suggest you to give the interviews and if you get an offer then look at the team that you're getting hired for right talk to its LinkedIn employees because it might happen that though the company might have a uh, overall bad work culture in general but those particular teams might be having a good learning curve right so hence i would suggest you to give the interviews right and then only if you get an offer then you can like do some research and if you have better offers then obviously feel free to go ahead right uh, but again i would say that take an informed decision talk to your team members in the role which you are hired for also try ask your recruiter you know to fix a conversation with uh, your hiring manager so that you get to know more about the work that your team is doing at the end uh, again there is no right and wrong to these things these things are very subjective and they depend on the individual's choices and the, at the point at which they stand in their career everyone has their own priorities so instead of you know, blindly believing in one particular thing i would highly suggest you to take an informed decision by first assessing your priorities right now and also talking to multiple people and my job is to help you guys out with giving you the information uh, classified collected from different places in one video so you know if you like this video don't forget to press the like button and press the subscribe button as well because the numbers really motivate me a lot in making more such videos also don't forget to share this video among our friends and the community and also don't forget to let me know down in comments that which is the next company i should review also don't forget to check out my graph playlist series i've covered graph from scratch also don't forget to check out my LLD series which is currently uh, in progress uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and you're liking my content i will see you in some other video till then stay safe and goodbye